December 7th, 1941, a day of infamy. Even as Japanese diplomats were conferring the Secretary of State Hall on peace measures, Nipponese planes were swooping down on Pearl Harbor. Within hours, the United States declared war. In the explosions at Pearl Harbor, there was forged the will for complete and absolute victory over the forces of evil. After the attack at Pearl Harbor, the three great labor organizations gave the positive assurance that there would be no strikes as long as the war lasted. The president of the United Mine Workers of America was a party to that assurance. Yes, I'm wondering, Senator, where the war is today. And apparently, we have plenty of aid to give stricken peoples anywhere in the world except in the mining regions of this country. Whenever the government will give guarantees that they will protect our people in the South from starving and that they will get food. That they'll be protected against evictions from their homes. That their civil liberties will be protected from the hired gunman in the South. The United Mine Workers of America will hold a meeting of their policy committee and I will recommend immediately all the mines in this country go to work where the operator of that mine will agree to sign this agreement. Coal will be mined no matter what any individual thinks about it. It is inconceivable that any patriotic miner can choose any course other than going back to work and mining coal. In war, Labor must do most of the work and do most of the dying. On Tuesday, March 25th, disaster occurred at the Centralia Number 5 mine. It's in Trail, Illinois. 111 coal miners were killed in this explosion. They left 98 widows, and they left 78 orphans. Is it any wonder that the widows in the mining camps now are reluctant to see their men go to the mines next week when the memorial period is over? If we must grind up human flesh and bones in the industrial machine that we call modern America, then before God I assert that those who consume the coal and you and I who benefit from that service because we live in comfort, we owe protection to those men first, and we owe the security for their families if they die. I say it, I voice it, I proclaim it, and I care not who in heaven or hell opposes it. The new soft coal walkout follows a dispute over a union demand for old age pensions for miners. Chief of the United Mine Workers, John L. Lewis has written a letter stating that the companies have refused to concede the pensions, whereupon soft coal diggers leave their jobs. 200,000 the first day of the walkout. John Lewis started setting up a health benefit and a pension plan for us. <laughs> 